Hello my true crime junkies, welcome back to my show And if you are new here, welcome to true crime junkies Please make sure that you subscribe and like my page If you have any comments or you would like to suggest a case You can message me on this page you are listening to uh, Or Instagram or TikTok Today I am talking about a cold case that as of today It, has not been resol- it hasn't been resolved these cases um, do deserve to be shared and bring more awareness to them. So hoping that someone that's listening to this or came across to this podcast knows somebody or knows something about this case and hopefully they contact authorities. Um, so we're going to be talking about Winston Maxey. Um, Winston Arthur Maxey III. He was born October 4th of 1954 in Rupert, Idaho. He was the second child and the first son born to Winston Jr. and Lorreen Maxey. Winston had an older sister named Vicky and six younger siblings. To help with this confusion with the second, third, and junior, um, when a son is named after his father, his family picks a nickname for, for him normally. And for Winston, he was Little Wind. Many describe Winston as being a cute, shy boy. Some of his classmates remember him as having a big heart. A friend of his recalls the time that um, during their second grade, their second grade teacher pulled him out out of his seat by his ear because he was being a little hard-headed. And then another one summer, another time during the summer, um, he really wanted a skateboard when his parents said they could not afford to buy it for him. So Winston went ahead and he went out, found some scrap plywood, and he built himself his own skateboard. His friends say he was a good kid. He did not abuse drugs, looked for trouble or anything like that. He was just a typical teenager. When Winston was 15 years old, he began dating a girl whom he liked very much. In the fall of 1970, she discovered she was pregnant. Early the next year, she was sent to a home for unwed mothers in Boise, Idaho. Her family decided it would be best to place the baby up for adoption. In the spring of 1971, after an argument with his mother, 16-year-old Winston was asked to leave the home. With nowhere to go, he found himself sleeping on the dirt at a local campground. A few days later, his cousin heard that Little Went was homeless and offered him a place to stay. In April 1971, Winston's girlfriend, now seven months pregnant, returned to Rupert, Idaho for a visit. Winston tried to talk with her, but she refused to speak to him because she knew he wanted her to keep the baby. Shortly thereafter, Vicki Schittler, Winston's older sister, made arrangements for him to visit visit his ex-girlfriend now in Boise. Vicky says Winston was only in Boise for a few days when he arrived. He learned from a friend that the lodging and fishing industry were booming in our in Oregon coast. Vicky says Little Went told her he was going to Coos Bay, Oregon in search of a job. Did he hitchhike or did he accept a ride from a friend? No one knows for sure at this time. The family lost track of him after he left to Boise in early summer of 1971. Winston was never reported missing. And in July of 1971, remains were found in Coos Bay, Oregon. It was a Sunday when the remains belonging to a juvenile male were discovered face up in Sneedon Creek in Coos Bay, Oregon, with no ID and within the body, and the official cause of death could not be determined. The police tried many times over the years to match the remains with known missing persons, but they were unsuccessful. For 50 years, the young man known as the Frog Boy remained unidentified. In 2016, Winston's daughter, who he was unaware at the time of his disappearance, began her search for her father. After she turned 18 years old, she hires a private investigator to help her find her biological parents. 
when she finds her mother, she learns that her father's name is Winston Arthur Maxey III. In 2017, the Coos Bay Sheriff's Office exhumes the young man's remain, hoping to obtain a DNA sample that could be used to identify him. In May of 2021, Dr. Nikki Vance, Oregon State Medical Examiner, sent a piece of his bone to Parabon Nanolabs. DNA was extracted and a SNP profile was created. This profile included information about his ancestry, his eyes, skin, and hair color, as well as his face morphology, and a composite image of what the young man may have looked like. For those of us that don't know what face morphology is, it's a measurable characteristic related to the shape, structure, color, or pattern of the full face from head to chin. In August of 2021, investigative genetic genealogist Cece Moore began reviewing the case. She built several family trees, which led her to Lori Miriam. Winston's daughter, the child he never met or got to know. As of today, Winston Arthur Maxey's cause of death is still undetermined, but Coos County Sheriff's Office considers the case open and active. His daughter, Lori, believes that her father met with foul play. In an effort to discover who killed him, Lori maintains a Facebook page called Who in the World Murdered Winston Maxey. You can visit this page and follow the case for updates. Um, she also established a Winston Arthur Maxey III Foundation in memory of the dad she never knew. The foundation's mission is to educate and support families with missing loved ones. If anybody out there knows any information or knew anything about this family, um, the Maxis, and may know anything regarding this case, please contact the Coos County Sheriff's Office at 541-396-7800. So um, that is all for now, my friends. Um, Again, if you do want to follow up on this case and see if there's any updates on this case remember Lori has a Facebook page called who in the world murdered Winston Maxey and you can follow that page and you can message them send them messages of support that kind of stuff so I really do believe that's a good thing for her healing process and you know for hopes for new tips in this case I do wish this family get uh this case solved and some justice for closure um i hope you guys enjoyed this episode um don't forget make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes hello my true crime junkies welcome back to my show and if you're new here